Boston Terrier Dog Training and Behavior Understanding Tips by Julia Silverton Narrated by Van Page 1. The Characteristics of a Boston Terrier Puppy and Dog Boston Terriers have a mind of their own. Be ready to have a personality at home when you own a Boston Terrier. They are very clownish and high-spirited to say the least, but some of them can be very dignified and calm as well. Some Boston Terrier owners say they have stubborn natures and some could be gentle and sweet. Overall, your boy would be a charming little lapper, a prince who would love to play fetch and a host of physically stimulating games all the time. He loves company and would super like it if you keep him in large families. His eyes are expressive and large. The head is attentive, and be ready for the snuffling and snorting sounds he emanates from his cute nose. This would surely bring out the cozy feelings in you when he does that in front of you. The Boston Terrier is intelligent and knows your mood. Mostly, they are one-man dogs and have a liking for senior citizens the most. However, they have very outgoing and sociable boys to have around, with high politeness as their status quo. As a watchdog, the Boston Terrier is very dependable, and you won't need a doorbell to know someone's knocking. With other pets around the house, the Boston Terrier is fine. If he sees a dog bigger than his own size, he may throw tantrums, which can be controlled, but never would a bone of aggression be seen on him. If this were your first time as a dog owner, you would sure love the breed endlessly. But remember, more than other breeds, the Boston Terrier has plenty of health issues to deal with because of the small face they have. The Boston Terrier is sturdy, even though he is small and has a coat which can be taken care of easily. Friendly and polite, loves to socialize with humans and pets, loves to play fetch and catch as well. But if you cannot stand a dog that snorts, wheezes, snores, slobbers, farts, bad at housebreaking, then the Boston Terrier isn't for you. Boston Terrier owners are constantly worried about the health of their dogs because of their short face on them. This makes the respiratory system weak, so if you smoke, stay far away when doing so. He should be kept far away from chemical cleaners, grass which is fresh cut, pollen, and other allergens which cause him breathing issues. An experienced vet would only use the best anesthetics and check his heartbeat regularly. If it is humid and hot outside, stay indoors with the Boston Terrier. They could have heat strokes since they pant more to bring down the heat in their body. Don't use a collar to leash. Use a Y-shaped harness. This keeps the windpipe of the Boston Terrier safe and allows him to breathe well. Once done feeding him, wipe his face folds and teach him how to housebreak right from day one. He can be quite obstinate and stubborn as a mule, but be patient, he will learn. 2. What You Should Know About Puppy Teeth There is no doubt about it. Puppies are going to chew on things. Dogs will have 28 baby teeth and 42 permanent teeth. When a puppy is roughly 2 to 3 weeks old, their baby teeth start to come in. All their baby teeth should be in place roughly by 8 weeks of age. A puppy's new teeth are very tiny and sharp and will hurt your fingers when they get a hold of them. Most mothers will start to wean their babies at five to six weeks old. Your puppy's baby teeth will start to come out around eight to twelve weeks of age. By roughly eight months old, your dog's permanent teeth should all be in. You should make sure that all baby teeth are out so that a tooth is not left in and another one comes in and crowds the space and causes your dog pain. You need to visit the vet if you see this happening. Your puppy is going to want to chew on something, just like a real baby. Their teeth are coming in and they want to relieve some of the pain. It's good for them to chew to help the teeth come through. You would want to get some appropriate chew items to help them. You could start to train your dog to have their teeth brushed. You can pick up doggy tooth supplies at your local pet store usually and get down and dirty and brush your doggy's teeth. 
Rawhide chews are an excellent source of good tooth hygiene, and they are good for your dog's teeth, and can help take off build-up plaque, and dogs usually love it also. A lot of puppies and dogs end up eating human food, usually from the weakest link of the family. If your dog is under the table, they will usually go to the person they think will most likely give them food scraps. If you do, just remember, chocolate and some nuts can kill your dog. Never give chocolate. Raisins can be just as deadly for your dog. Do not give. They can shut down your dog's kidneys. So be very careful of these products and your puppy or dog. Three, some helpful tips for raising your Boston Terrier puppy. Before you bring your Boston Terrier puppy home, you might want to get some things ready for him or her. Some of the things you might want to get would include some dog crates, one or two for the house and one for the car. You would want to get some fencing for the backyard. And as you know, Boston Terriers are going to be big dogs when they grow up. You might as well get the heaviest duty dog gear you can buy. It'll be worth it. You would want to get your home and yard ready, just like you would for a new baby almost. You would want to bring your puppy home and puppy proof your home. Nothing that would hurt your puppy should be out, and all the cabinets should be locked. For outside of the house, all pools and hot tubs should be fenced in, and all gates should be locked and double checked. A Boston Terrier can really put a lot of weight into something. If you think they might get out, they probably can. So make it even tougher. It's a Boston Terrier. Collars and leashes. You would actually need several for training purposes. A short one for training and a long one for the walks you go on. You should never leave a collar on a puppy while unsupervised as it could get caught and choke the puppy. A collar should be used only when training but they are common on most every dog. Just make sure you have a good fitting one and watch your puppy to make sure he or she does not get it caught. A collar should not be left on, but the dog's owner do it all the time, so just be extra careful. You should never have to yell or scream or get carried away when trying to train your Boston Terrier. If you feel he or she is not moving forward, take a break and try it again in a while. Make sure you're not the one who is trying too hard. The puppy will learn commands over time. No puppy gets it all right the first time. There will be mistakes. But in the long run, you will have a much better trained dog, one you and your family can live with for many years to come. While your puppy is still young, you should enroll yourself and your new puppy in as many dog obedient classes as you think you could handle. This will be the best experience for both you and your puppy, and you both will bond much better together and get the most out of it. For the long run, it's totally worth it. Hopefully your puppy has already seen the vet before you ever bring him home. Just for a checkup at least, you should at this time find a responsible, reputable vet in your area and set your new puppy up for regular visits and exams all puppies and dogs need to have on a regular basis. The first day you bring your new puppy home, Try to make it a day when you have plenty of time off work or school so the puppy is not immediately left alone and insecure. It is best to spend plenty of time with the new puppy, especially the first couple of days. If you take a towel or sock with you and let the mother and other siblings roll around on it, it'll be a good comfort blanket to help your new puppy adjust to his new home. Your puppy might whine, whimper, and cry the first couple of nights. This is totally natural. It will go away eventually, and this is how the mother is raised by the baby. It whines, and when it cries for its mother, when it wants to eat, and is crying out for attention. This is where the towel or sock with the mother's scent rubbed on it comes in handy to put inside the crate. You would also want some good solid stainless steel bowls for food and water. You should check with your vet on a proper food and feeding time, usually twice daily at the same time but some vets recommend different diets for your Boston Terrier, so check with your vet first. Teach your new Boston Terrier puppy to be part of the family. Boston Terrier dogs like to be included with the family, but they're not happy to be left in the backyard. They'd like to be included with the family, so keep that in mind and have fun with your new Boston Terrier puppy. You can teach your new puppy to go to the bathroom outside. 
you need to take the new puppy outside several times a day. A puppy cannot tell when he or she has to go outside to pee or poop. They just go. It's your responsibility to know to take the dog outside since they will have to go to the bathroom several times each day. When you take your new puppy outside, teach them to eliminate in a certain spot, and then give them a treat and praise. Continue to do this each time take them outside, tell them to go potty, and wait for them to go. As soon as they are done, reward them with praise and a treat, and take them back inside. When you take your puppy outside to go to the bathroom, when you take him or her out, just stand still and let the dog do their business. When they're finally done doing their business, while they're doing it, just stand there and say, Good potty, good baby, and talk sweet to them until they're done. When they are done, give them praise and a treat. Continue doing this until you only use praise, and the dog will learn to go outside and do his or her business quickly, and then come back in. Under no circumstances should you ever leave your new puppy unsupervised. If you have to do something, he or she should be in the crate, safe and sound. Four, are rawhide treats good for your Boston Terrier? By all means, give your dog some rawhide treats. They are good for them, and dogs love them. Rawhide is great for cleaning your dog's teeth, and it also gives your Boston Terrier something to chew on beside your couch or your favorite pair of shoes. When looking at rawhide, try to find the biggest pieces because you don't want the smaller bone fragments that break off the smaller ones for your Boston Terrier. You would be smart to ask your vet or shop around for the best quality rawhide you can find. It comes in many different styles and even fun-filled treats inside of them to keep your Boston Terrier entertained. It's best to supervise your dog with a rawhide chew, as it could come apart and get lodged in the dog's throat. But that is extremely rare, but still could happen. Just as any toy or treat you give your pet should be supervised. When your dog has chewed on a big piece of rawhide, and it's soft and gooey, take it away and give them a new one. Let the old one harden up again, and you can give it back to them later. The good thing about rawhide is it's as good for your Boston Terrier's stress level as well. A bored Boston Terrier will have more stress because he or she is bored, and a rawhide treat will keep them more occupied and entertained. It's hard to tell if good rawhide comes from the United States or other countries, so it's best to get the best quality you can find. 5. How to Crate Train Your Boston Terrier If you were a new Boston Terrier puppy, wouldn't you want your new home to be warm, comfortable, secure, and inviting? Sure you would. Your new Boston Terrier puppy, or even a full-grown older dog, loves a nice, secure home to sleep in. You want your Boston Terrier puppy or dog to have a secure place to rest and go to when you want them to be in a secure place while you're gone away. To begin with, a new puppy, you would want to have a good-sized crate, one they could stand up in and lie down in, and turn around comfortably, but not too big either. You would want to leave the door open in the beginning and get your Boston Terrier used to the crate. You would put a treat at the opening of the crate, let your dog or puppy go and eat it. You would continue until they are, you are putting the treats in the back of the crate and your Boston Terrier feels comfortable going inside. You want them to get used to getting a treat and going inside, and then later turn it into a praise. This will be their home. You would put their food and water inside, and with training, it will become their own little den, a place where they like to sleep. After you have your Boston Terrier going inside, it's time to shut the door just for a very short period of time, one to two minutes. You would give your Boston Terrier a treat while inside, and praise, and then open the door back up. You never want to use the crate as punishment. Do not put them in the crate when they have been bad. They will associate that with being put in the crate, and you want them to feel good and secure in their spot. Put the crate out of the way, but not totally out of the way. Somewhere in the room where the family shares, but in his or her little corner. Make it a nice home for them. If you're going to be gone, and you have to leave your Boston Terrier in his crate for a long period of time, Try to get them their favorite toys. 
a toy with a snack inside that takes time to get out, so they're occupied for a while because you want them to associate with going into the crate as a fun place to go. Six, when your Boston Terrier makes potty mistakes. Too many dogs have been abandoned at animal shelters just for the sole purpose of the dog making potty mistakes in the wrong places and not being properly trained. Boston Terriers sometimes might go potty in response to fear, excitement, separation anxiety, marking territory, and sometimes medical purposes. It's the best to start with your vet about any medical problems before you move forward. Some dogs may have a urinary infection. Spayed females may have some small leaking at times when they lie down or sleep. One of the most common symptoms is separation anxiety. If the dog has gone through new changes or there has been a change in the household, it could be affecting your Boston Terrier. Another problem might be submissive urination which occurs when the dog first sees you when you come home. They may exhibit uncontrollable urinating and submissive behavior like rolling on his or her back. One way to help remedy this is to immediately take your Boston Terrier outside right when you get home and try to stay calm and low beat when you're just greeting your dog to help him or her get less excited. Some dogs will perform a marking behavior by lifting their hind legs and urinating. This is most common in unneutered male dogs. If a male dog is neutered around six months of age, this will usually cure this behavior. A male dog should be neutered if he is not intended for breeding or if there is a medical reason why your dog should not be neutered. If you see your Boston Terrier getting ready to go potty, immediately clap your hands together or use another device to get their attention and immediately take them outside. A dog is not considered housebroken until he or she has not had an accident for around 45 days in a row. You can easily train your young Boston Terrier to go outside when you notice that he or she is sniffing around as if they want to go. After they had just ate or had a bath, just woke up, or just your gut instinct that your Boston Terrier might go potty inside. If you need to be gone away from your Boston Terrier for an extended period of time, you should keep him or her in a crate or cage. Make sure you do not give him an oversized crate or cage or they will use that space to go potty. If you need to train an adult Boston Terrier, do it just like you would a puppy. Give them the right guidance and train them just as you would a puppy. An adult dog needs to urinate roughly three to four times a day and defecate once or twice daily. When your puppy or adult Boston Terrier does a bad thing inside, in a stern and firm voice say bad dog and then take them outside where you would like them to go and tell them good dog give them praise when your boston terrier goes outside to potty train a puppy or adult dog you must lay down newspapers and bring the puppy to the newspapers and say good dog at that spot when you catch your puppy starting to go get them if you still can and tell them bad dog and then put them on the newspaper and tell them good dog and after they go, give them praise. You would start out with a wide section of newspapers on the floor in the beginning, and then slowly you can decrease the size to a manageable spot. Give your Boston Terrier a little time to get used to this. They will learn to go into the newspapers when they get the praise. Use a stern voice when they go on the wrong spot. They would rather have praise and will learn to go on the newspapers. 7. How to Teach Your Boston Terrier to Fetch Dogs and owners usually love a good game of fetch, especially if your dog brings the item back to you and gives it to you or drops it at your feet. Playing catch is a great way to spend quality time with your puppy or dog. You can easily teach your puppy or dog to fetch with a few simple commands. Dogs used to be taught to fetch so they could help police and others fetch guns and drugs from the bad guys. One of the best ways to teach your puppy or dog to fetch is to use two identical toys. This is called the bait and switch system. What you would do is hide one of the toys on your person and then toss the other toy away from you, not too far in the beginning, so that your dog can visually keep an eye on the object. 
you would keep your dog on his or her leash, since you want them to chase the object when you give the word fetch, not when they see you throw it. They should not leave until the command of fetch is given to them. You would hide one of the toys on your body, then toss the other toy away, and then unleash your dog and tell them to fetch. When your dog goes and gets the toy and brings it back to you but does not drop it, you pull out the other toy and pretend like that is the fun toy to have, and then your dog wants to have that toy instead. When they drop the toy in their mouth, you throw the other toy and say fetch again and pick up the other toy they dropped when they run off again. If your dog is not toy motivated, you could try rubbing some of their favorite food product on it and then trying it that way. It'll be hard for your dog to resist when it's slimed with their favorite food product. If your dog does not take to any of the fetch play, then you might have to force him to fetch. You would do this by throwing the toy, saying fetch. If your dog does not move, you physically walk them over to the toy and wait by the toy until the dog picks it up. And if you have meat spread on it, they will pick it up or change their favorite food on it. When your dog picks up the toy, give lots of praise for doing a good job. You should find good items to play fetch with your dog with. A stick you find in the woods is not the best thing. When your dog is running with it, it can get stuck in the ground and jab them. And it can also have disease and germs from the actual tree on it. It is best to start out with small things so your dog can visually see the item and you won't have to walk as far. If your dog does not cooperate in the beginning and you have to teach him or her for a bit, once you have your dog fetching for you, it will be a sport you both love and cherish. Eight, make it easier and healthier for feeding your Boston Terrier. You can make it so much easier on your Boston Terrier when it comes to eating. Some dogs you can leave the food out for them and they do not overeat. Other dogs may overeat until they get bloated or they gobble it down super fast and have gas problems or more serious problems. To find out how much your dog should be eating, you should check first with your vet. You could also measure your dog's food and then feed him or her twice a day. If they eat the whole bowl, give them more the next time. If they do not eat at all, give them a little less. You could measure it and then come up with the right amount for your dog each meal. For the dogs that gobble down their food so fast, the pet supply stores sell dog bowls that have inserts in the bowl so the dog would have to slow down to eat. You would never want to give your dog just one meal a day. You should feed them twice a day and at the same time each day so they can count on their schedule just like people seem to love breakfast, lunch, and dinner. For large dogs, it is harder on them and their joints when they have to bend over to get their head down to the ground to get a drink of water. And it's bad for their joints, especially if they're still young. Some pet supply stores sell water and food bowls that go in a stand and make it higher off the ground and that makes it easier for your dog or puppy to swallow as their body is more parallel to the ground while eating. Raised water and eating bowls will make your dog more comfortable when eating and it's especially great if they have muscle or joint problems and you want your dog to have a healthy and happy life. Just like people, some dogs don't drink enough water sometimes. If you can get your dog to drink a little more water, it'll be much better and healthier for them. You can get one of the bowls from the pet supply stores that give a continuous supply of cool water, and your dog might even enjoy that more. 9. When your Boston Terrier has separation anxiety and how to deal with it. Separation anxiety can happen in any dog at any age and for any reason. Doctors are not sure why this happens, but they do agree that it is happening more in dogs that are not properly nurtured as puppies, had new moves, or a new schedule. The dog might be moved around as a puppy, and these things might make a dog have separation anxiety. Some of the things a dog might do could be excessive, like howling, barking, whining, pacing, chewing, scratching, digging, urinating, and defecating. As time goes on, the systems become worse. The dog might break his teeth, rip his or her nails, and injure him or herself. 
It seems to happen in pets which did not have much time socializing as puppies. One good way to teach your Boston Terrier something good is to find a quiet place for just you and the dog, and then get them to relax with you. When you have them relaxed, give them a treat. You can do this slowly and back away and put more distance between you and the dog, slowly separating the two of you. Another good technique is by misleading your dog. They might be accustomed to your car keys shaking, meaning you are leaving, or putting on your jacket, or other signs your dog might know, might read, that leads them to know you're leaving. Try picking up your car keys several times a day and do not leave. Put your jacket on and take it back off several times a day. Try to break up your dog's regular routine pattern that you might not even think about. Your dog might already have a routine that you subconsciously didn't even realize it. When you come home, pretend that you don't even notice the dog until he or she has calmed down. And then when they have relaxed, give him or her praise or a treat. Another way is to give your dog some excitement. Could you imagine being cooped up all day long while your owner is out working and you have to play with the same old toy day in and day out? If you turn on the lights 30 minutes early or give your dog a new toy with a secret treat inside, that will keep them occupied and spice up their day. If you were a pet, would you not want to be treated this way? Remember, young dogs still have lots of energy. If you come home and find your favorite chair in shreds, you might want to consider increasing the younger dog's exercise pattern. They should be exercised twice a day, from 30 to 45 minutes each time. You could teach those commands, teach them to play fetch, and other good times. Your Boston Terrier needs plenty of exercise to feel like a dog. Most dogs were bred for a certain job, a herder, a shepherd, a honey dog, and more. A dog has these instincts in their blood, and you need to make sure they get plenty of exercise. 10. When your Boston Terrier is afraid of loud noises. If your Boston Terrier has a fear of loud noises, gunshots, fireworks, thunderstorms, and other loud noises, it is very common among dogs. If he or she is displaying signs like shaking, trembling, hiding, trying to run away, barking, urinating, or uncontrollable pooping, these could be some of the signs. You can sometimes treat this with behavior modifications, general change of environment, and even prescription medications. One of the best ways to make the dog better is to change his or her own living environment around. You should increase the dog's daily exercise program to make him physically more drained. Give your pet his or her own space. Pets love to feel secure and protected. Try to make a crate or sleeping area that gives them comfort and has some walls around them so they don't feel like they have to worry about things coming at them from all directions. Dogs usually like to find nice places to relax and sleep, like under chairs, tables, and places where they feel safe, where they can sleep and still keep one eye open to make sure they can keep out of harm's way. Give your Boston Terrier a more noise-friendly atmosphere. You could turn on a radio or run a fan or other mechanical noisemaker that is peaceful and continuous. This is good if the dog can hear noise outside, like kids yelling and playing or other dogs barking or construction going on. It helps tone down the noise with other continuous noise to calm the dog. Don't overly give your dog extra added attention, like petting him or her longer. They might interpret this as a good reward for acting like that. Just treat your dog normally. One fun way to try and teach your dog not to be afraid is to give him or her a favorite treat or snack each time the loud noise is going to come. If it is a thunderstorm, each time the loud bang comes, give your dog a treat. They will look forward to more thunderstorms. If you want to train your dog not to be afraid, you can obtain CDs or downloads from the Internet of Thunderstorms fireworks, gunshots, etc., and begin by letting your dog listen to these sounds at low volume. You will gradually increase the volume over time and give your dog a treat when he or she does not freak out to the sound. Slowly increase the volume each training session, and then slowly do less and less training until your Boston Terrier does not have any more fear of the loud noises. If this does not suit you, 
there are medications available from your veterinarian that you can give to your dog before a storm or loud noises to calm him or her down the old-fashioned way with prescription drugs. You should be able to find noises online very easily with all the major search engines. Just type in thunderstorm sounds and you'll be on your way. 11. How to stop your Boston Terrier from jumping up on people. It is your dog's way of getting your attention, and the best way he or she knows is jumping up on you when they see you and want to greet you with get some attention from you. And want to greet you and get some attention from you. This is almost always cute when your Boston Terrier is a puppy, but when he or she gets bigger, that would get really old fast. You need to teach your puppy not to jump up and get excited when they see you. Some of the best ways to teach your Boston Terrier not to jump up on people, and you don't want guests and family members avoiding your dog that jumps up on people now, do you? The best way to curb this is not to be excited when you see your dog and don't make eye contact. When your dog goes to jump up on you, turn your body so he or she slides down. Keep doing this and do not talk to the dog, just use your body language. Keep turning to the side until your dog finally settles down, and then when he or she is standing calm, give them praise for being calm. Your Boston Terrier should learn to be calmer, and they will get the praise they desire much sooner. Make sure you have all the other family members on board. If one person lets the dog jump up, he or she will be confused, so get the whole family into the training program. 12. How to build a whelping box for your Boston Terrier, or any other size dog for that matter. Just change the sizes. You can determine what size whelping box you need by making sure your dog has plenty of room to walk around the whelping box. The purpose of the whelping box is to make sure that the mother does not get one of the puppies lodged between her and the box and squeezes them to death. Boston Terriers or any other larger sized dog can easily smother their young if they get laid on. I think the best way to make a nice whelping box for a Boston Terrier is to take a full sheet of half inch plywood, cut it in half. The floor would be a 4x4 four four piece and use 2x2 two two wood to make a frame on the inside and along the edges for a nice look. Take 6 inch wide PVC piping you can buy from any hardware store and cut 6 inch pieces off of the PVC and use them for the legs inside. Use plastic PVC elbow joints to connect them together for a perfect 4 foot square that you could raise and lower pretty easy into the whelping box. When you have the plastic PVC piping inside the box, it makes it harder for the mother to lay down against the sides of the box when she is feeding her puppies, and if one gets stuck between she and the sides of the box, with her moving around all the time, the puppy will have the added air vent below that keeps the mom's weight off the puppy, and the puppy can survive. 13. How to Teach Your Boston Terrier to Sit Teaching your puppy or dog to sit does not have to be hard at all. The sit command is a great tool to make your dog behave and not get hurt if something is going on and you want them to sit and to be safe. It does not matter if you have a puppy or a dog. You can easily teach him or her to sit on command. You just need to remember that not every dog will pick up things the first time, so make sure you have patience while training. To teach your puppy or dog to sit, it is important to remember not to do this if you are in a bad mood or frustrated. It's not a good time to teach your dog to sit. Some dogs will learn faster than others, and some will pick it up right away. You just have to have patience with them. You might want to try to teach your dog to sit command when he or she is getting hungry. That way, they will want to get the treats you are going to give them. They will do good. Find a good quiet spot where there are not distractions, like from other people or animals. Later, you will want to add distractions so your dog can learn to sit. Even on a city sidewalk or at the city park, you want your dog to behave when they're supposed to. You would want your dog to be standing in front of you, and then with a piece of treat in your fingers, show the dog the treat and keep it about nose level. If you keep it too high, the dog might try to jump and get it. 
wave the treat from the nose toward the tail, and then say the word sit while you move the treat back over the dog's head toward the tail. They should sit down while looking at the treat, and when they sit, say good dog and give them the treat. Your dog should get used to staying in the sit command until you give the command come or free or another word you might like to use with your dog or puppy. You would want to teach them with treats and praise and then slowly wean the dog off of the treats and stick to praise and love. You should not put your dog in the sit hold for very long at the beginning so your dog does not get bored right off the bat. Continue practicing with your dog several times a day. Make sure you exchange the treats for praise and your dog will be much safer when you need them to sit and wait for you when you give the command. 14. Why your Boston Terrier needs a good soft bed to sleep in. You would want to give your new Boston Terrier puppy or any adult Boston Terrier dog a nice soft bed to sleep in. Boston Terriers are very nice dogs, and if they sleep on the hard ground or floor, they get calluses on their body, just like camels do, and it's not good for them. Boston Terriers have such wonderful bodies, they need a soft place to lie down and you should make sure that they have a comfortable place to sleep. Usually, a dog that is sleeping on a hard surface gets calluses on their bodies, and if it gets worse, they call that hygroma, which can become infected and filled up and need medical attention. The best way to avoid this is to give your Boston Terrier a nice soft bed. They're going to be a good dog and fun, and you don't want them to be in pain later in life. The pet business is filled with tons of different types of plush soft beds for puppies and dogs. Give your Boston Terrier the bed he or she deserves and they will love you for it. It's not uncommon for adult Boston Terrier dogs to sleep twice as long as people throughout the day and night. Your Boston Terrier spends a lot of time sleeping and if he or she has any arthritis or joint problems, they even have special orthopedic beds for older dogs. Your Boston Terrier will appreciate having a nice, soft, comfortable bed to call his or her own. Just like you enjoy a nice, soft mattress to sleep on, your Boston Terrier deserves the same from you. And being that they are such a large breed dog, they need it even more. 15. How to Stop Your Boston Terrier from Running Away or Bolting Out the Door It's not good at all for your Boston Terrier puppy or dog to try to run away every chance they can or bolt out the door whenever you open it. This could be one of the worst things for your puppy or dog as they could get lost or hurt and you don't want that. The reason they like to run away is many different reasons, and if you curb some of the reasons, it will make it much better for you and your puppy or dog. Dogs are usually rewarded when they break out and run away and explore. They can find other dogs they can run with sometimes, or a cat they can chase down the street or up a tree. They might see a child that they've never seen before, and they want to be petted by someone. They might find a mate dog out there, and they want to go to find them. They could tip over the neighbor's trash cans and find interesting things to rummage through. There are just all sorts of reasons a dog gets rewarded when they break out or bolt out the door and take off, but still so dangerous. Whatever the reason your Boston Terrier is trying to break out, if you can contain some of the ways and reasons, it makes it much easier for you. For example, if the fence is loose in a certain spot and he or she gets out there, by all means fix it. If the dog can see the mail delivery person coming each day, maybe you could put up some tarps so your dog could not see out, or even moving the mailbox to a different location so your dog does not see it anymore. You need to take away the temptation that gets them wound up in the first place. You want to make it less inviting for your puppy or dog to break out than to stay around the home. If you take away some of the obstacles and make it harder for them to break away, that is good, and you also want to make their desire to leave and run away less, too. Some dogs just have a natural instinct to want to get away and be with a pack, be it dogs or humans. It's a natural instinct, and you can curb it, but you can't take it out of your dog. You can learn a few home trick remedies, but nothing would be as good as you and your dog attending dog obedience classes together. 
you would learn much more in detail and your dog would respect you and wait for your guidance. It would want to please you rather than bolting out the door on you. Some little tricks you can do yourself would be to be by the door and open the door when your dog comes. If he or she stops at the door and does not go out, you give them praise and a treat. If he or she bolts from the door, you get them back and you do it again. This time you let the door almost come closed, but you keep it open just a little bit. When the dog sits or stays at the door still partly open, you give them a treat and praise again. Repeat this until you have the dog sitting in front of the door and he or she does not go out and you give them praise and a treat until you only rely on praise only. The only time the dog should want to go through the open door is when you go first and tell the dog to come and he or she will follow you. If you never go out the door or call them, they should stay inside unless called. Any dog that breaks out of his or her yard or bolts from an open door could end up being a tragic situation for the dog, especially if there are passing cars nearby. You want to take care of the problem immediately before your puppy or dog could get hurt or killed. Sixteen, some helpful tips for raising your Boston Terrier puppy. Before you bring your Boston Terrier puppy home, you might want to get a few things ready for him or her. Some of the things you might want to get would include some dog crates, one or two for the house and one for the car. You would want to get some fencing for the backyard, and as you know, Boston Terrier is going to be a big dog when they grow up. You might as well get the heaviest duty dog gear you can buy. It'll be worth it. You would want to get your home and yard ready, just like you would be for a new baby almost. You would want to puppy-proof your home. Nothing that would hurt the puppy should be out, and all the cabinets should be locked. For outside the house, all pools and hot tubs should be fenced in, and all gates should be locked and double-checked. A Boston Terrier can really put a lot of weight into something. If you think they might get out, they probably can, so make it even tougher. It's a Boston Terrier. Collars and leashes. You would probably need several for training purposes. A short one for training and a long one for walks you go on. You should never leave a collar on a puppy while unsupervised. It could get caught and choke the puppy. A collar should be used only when training but they are common on almost every dog. Just make sure you have a good fitting one and watch your puppy to make sure he or she does not get it caught. A collar should not be left on, but dog owners do it all the time, it seems. Just be extra careful. You should never have to yell or scream or get carried away when trying to train your Boston Terrier. If you feel he or she is not moving forward, take a break and try it again in a bit. Make sure that you're not the one who is trying too hard. To a puppy, they will learn the commands over time. No puppy gets it all right the first time. There will be mistakes, but in the long run, you'll have a much better trained dog, one you and your family can live with for many years to come. While your puppy is still young, you should enroll yourself and your new puppy in as many dog obedient classes as you think you could handle. This would be the best experience for both you and your puppy, and you both will bond much better together and get the most out of it. For the long haul, it's really worth it. Hopefully your puppy has already seen the vet before you even brought him home, just for a checkup at least. You should at this time find a reputable vet in your area and set your new puppy up for regular visits and exams all puppies and dogs need to have on a regular basis. The first day you bring your new puppy home, Try to make it when you have plenty of time off of work or school so that the puppy is not immediately left alone and insecure. It is best to spend plenty of time with the new puppy, especially the first couple of days. If you can take a sock or towel with you and let the mother and any other siblings roll around on it, it would be a good comfort blanket to help your new puppy adjust to his new home. Your puppy might whine, whimper, and cry the first couple of nights. This is natural, really. It will go away eventually. This is how the baby is raised by its mother. It whines when it cries for its mother, when it wants to eat, and is crying out for attention. 
This is where the sock or towel with the mother's scent rubbed on it comes in handy to put inside the crate. You would also want to put some good solid stainless steel bowls for food and water. You could check with your vet on proper food and feeding time, usually twice daily at the same times. But some vets recommend different diets for Boston Terriers, so check with your vet first. Teach your new Boston Terrier puppy to be a part of the family. Boston Terrier dogs love to be included with the family. They're not happy to be left in the backyard. They like to be included with their family. So keep in mind and have fun with your new Boston Terrier puppy. You can teach your new puppy to go to the bathroom outside. You need to take your new puppy outside several times a day. A puppy cannot tell when he or she has to go pee or poop. They just go. It's your responsibility to know to take the puppy outside since they will have to go to the bathroom several times each day. When you take your new puppy outside, teach them to eliminate themselves in a certain spot, and then give them a treat and praise. Continue to do this each time you take them outside. Tell them to go to potty and wait for them to go. As soon as they go and are done, reward them with praise and a treat, and take them back inside. When you take your puppy outside to the bathroom, and you take him or her out, just stand still, let the dog do their business. When they're finally done doing their business, while they're doing it, just stand there and say, good dog, good potty, good baby, and talk sweet to them until they're done. When they are done, give them praise and a treat. Continue doing this until you use only praise, and the dog will learn to go outside and do his or her business quickly, then come back inside. Under no circumstances should you ever leave your new puppy unsupervised. If you have to do something, he or she should be in the crate safe and sound. Seventeen. How to socialize your Boston Terrier puppy. All dogs should be socialized as puppies before they are sixteen weeks old. This is the most important time in a dog's life. This is the time that will shape them and determine what kind of friendly dog they will turn out to be. This is the time your puppy should get to know people and other dogs and animals. This is the most important part of a puppy's life and will determine how his or her behavior is when they grow up and what type of personality they will have. This is the most important time to get close and bond to your Boston Terrier puppy and introduce your puppy to things in his or her life. You may introduce your puppy to rides in cars, or meeting new people, or going for a walk in the park. Your puppy will also be meeting new surroundings and things on his or her own, like plants, wild animals, birds, cats, things they might come across on their own without you, so they need to be prepared for life. You want your new puppy to adjust well to his or her new world. You don't want to leave them in a kennel all day, which would not be good for them or you. Every single puppy needs to be socialized so they have a good understanding of their environment and all the things that go on around them. No matter where you obtain the puppy from, all puppies need to be socialized. The time to socialize your puppy is up to 16 weeks old. After that, it's almost too late. You don't want them to start having problems like separation anxiety, excessive barking, chewing up your favorite items, urinating and defecating in the wrong spots. If you plan to take your puppy or dog to obedience training classes, you will have a much more enjoyable time if your puppy is already familiar with things. You should take the time to socialize him or her so that they can have an excellent opportunity of being the best dog you want them to be. You want to socialize your puppy because when he or she is older, you want them to get along well with humans and other animals and society in general. You don't want a puppy that hides or is scared of every little thing around him or her. You don't want a puppy or dog that barks at every moving thing or anything else like that. Every single person the dog comes in contact with will be a sign that the puppy has not socialized properly at an early age. Give your puppy the love and respect it deserves and have fun with him or her also while doing this socializing. Your dog will love you for it later. A big reason some of the dogs in the United States have to be euthanized each year is just for the simple fact the dog did not get socialized when he or she was a puppy. And for that sad fact, a puppy or dog just did not have the skills to act appropriately in family 
public or tough situations. It's a poor fact that if most all dogs had the properly trained or socialized as puppies, they would have been much gentler and would be well behaved when they grew up. It's not that hard to socialize your new puppy, and it can be fun and rewarding. You don't really want your dog to grow up where you just leave them in the backyard by themselves if they don't know how to interact with the family. They're a nuisance in the neighborhood in general, one that destroys or digs holes all over your backyard. You have to have a choice and make a choice when you get your puppy. You can make him or her responsible, friendly, well-behaved, and good-natured as a dog. It's nice when you have a dog you can trust, and everyone should be able to trust their dog. You want your dog to be able to take and make rational decisions when he or she is out and about with you. He should be capable of being around lots of people without jumping up on them and barking non-stop at them. From the day your new Boston Terrier puppy is born, the mother has already started the process for you. When she has the litter, she will make sure she licks each one to stimulate them, and they can urinate and defecate, and the mother will take care of this. It is natural for them to do that. As the pups get older, the mother will use smell, sounds, and body language to teach the pups natural skills. This is also the time when the mother might discipline her puppies. Don't be alarmed. This is natural also. The puppies learn from each other while together in the litter. They play, wrestle, and generally learn to live with each other and get along and get to know each other. When your puppy is roughly seven to eight weeks old, this is the crucial time to play with them with human hands, with human touch and smells. This is also a good time for the breeder or owner to start the puppy on household training. You do not want your Boston Terrier puppy or dog to be afraid of humans when they grow up. It is extremely important to spend some quality time with your puppy, just playing, hugging, and loving him or her. You want them to be used to you and other members of the household as well. Most new puppies arrive at their new home around eight weeks or older. When your new puppy arrives, you want to immediately start socializing them with everything around them. You also want to remember not to give them something that will scare them too much or damage them. You would not want to immediately introduce them to an aggressive dog, which is too aggressive for them or could scar them for life. Just use common sense when dealing with your new puppy. If you have a giant hole in your backyard, you would not want to let your new puppy go out and find the hole by accident. You would go and introduce your new puppy to the new surroundings with a tour so he or she would feel safe but still interested and alert. It is good to introduce your new Boston Terrier puppy to a chew toy at this time. This will be used for training purposes. You should pick up your puppy and give him or her the love all puppies desire. Rub their belly, scratch their head, talk to them gently, and your new puppy will love it so much, and you will too. Now that your new puppy is home, it is important to start to teach him or her some basic commands right away. They should learn commands like sit, down, stay, etc. This is the time you want to introduce your puppy to lots of new experiences, like loud radios, kids playing and yelling, household appliances that make noise, and vacuum cleaners, televisions, dishwashers, lawnmowers, etc. It's good to let your puppy discover for his or herself while you give good supervision. Let them walk around and discover the plants in the yard, toys in the kid's bedroom, and tools in the garage. Don't let them get hurt, but let them explore so they're not afraid of their surroundings. If your dog is going to be living in a high-rise or on a boat or a yacht, get them used to elevators and getting on or off the boat safely. Take your puppy out for walks and let them meet other dogs on leashes. Let other people stop and pet your dog. You don't want your dog to grow up to be afraid of people, and then they might bite them out of fear. It's good to introduce your new puppy to as many people as you can between 8 and 16 weeks old. This is the stage that it is most important to socialize your new Boston Terrier puppy with people. Encourage them to be gentle with your puppy, to touch, to play with, to pet, and to give treats in a non-threatening manner. It is not recommended to take your new puppy off the leash in dog parks as some parks have many dogs. Some of the dogs will not have been vaccinated, and it is still your choice, but you would probably not want to send your kids to school while other kids have not been vaccinated if you knew about it. Don't assume all the dogs at the park off the leash 
have been socialized properly and that they are all vaccinated, use caution around dog parks. If you want to teach your puppy or dog to ride in the car with you, take him or her on short trips at first. If you put your new puppy or dog in a car and take a trip across the country, the puppy or dog might never want to get back in the car again. Take short trips and make the first couple to fun places. If your dog's only ride in the car is to go to the vet or somewhere else unpleasant, they will associate the ride with unpleasant things. So make it happy for them. Eighteen. How to stop your Boston Terrier dog from excessive barking. If your Boston Terrier puppy or dog is barking excessively, it could be from many different things. He or she could be caught on or under a fence. He or she could be barking at other dogs in the neighborhood, or they could be lonely and feel depressed. Dogs bark for many reasons, really. It would be impractical to think that your puppy or dog would never bark again because some barking is actually good for a dog and you. Dogs bark to alert their owners of danger or a suspicious person lurking around. But a dog that just barks and barks and you don't seem to know why not only bothers you, but it usually always disturbs the neighbors as well. One of the first things you need to find out is why your dog is barking in the first place. Does he or she see a squirrel or a cat in a tree every day and bark at that? Alternatively, does your puppy or dog not get enough exercise and is left alone outside for long periods of time and are barking from boredom? After you find out why they're barking, it's much easier to correct the problem then. Puppies will naturally bark if they are playing and running around. It is in their nature to playful bark, and that is normal. If you cannot notice that what your dog is barking at, sometimes they can see or smell things you cannot, so you might need to take a closer look again. Maybe there is a small rodent or pest that is so fast that you just don't see them, but your dog does. You should also make sure you have your Boston Terrier puppy or dog checked out by a vet to make sure he or she is fine before you try to correct the problem. It is good to have a nice place for your dog to sleep, like a doghouse, a dog bed, and a nice place to make their own. You would not like it if you had to sleep outside and no one gave you a house or bed to sleep in, so be good to your dog. Here are some ways to help curb your dog's barking. If your dog is barking and you open the door to let him or her in, you're just reinforcing them to bark each time they want to come inside. When they bark, they know you will come to the door and let them in, and the barking is working for them. If you go to the door and stand there and scream like a raving lunatic, they will think you're joining in on the celebration and they will want to bark even more. You are barking to them, so they want to bark also and join in. If your Boston Terrier puppy or dog is barking and you come and baby him or her or give him or her treats, that is no good. They will think that is a sign that barking is what they need to do to get treats and attention from you, so never reward this type of barking. There are several ways to teach your dog that barking is not rewarded. If you are gone all day and you are aware that your dog barks excessively while you are gone, he or she most likely thinks that if they keep barking, you will show up. Eventually, when you show up, you immediately go to the dog, and the barking might stop then. In your dog's mind, he or she has been barking to bring you home, and it worked. You are finally home. To cure this type of barking, when you get home, do not immediately go to your dog. Let the dog know that you are not rewarding him for barking. Do not go to the dog until after he or she has settled down and then go to him or her after the barking has stopped and does not start again for a bit. If your dog barks when the phone rings or your cell phone goes off, teach them to ignore it. You could do this by having a friend or family member call your phone repeatedly, and you just sit there and do not answer it. With repetition, your dog will bark less and less, and then get bored with the phone altogether. One of the easiest things to remember when training your dog is to praise or reward your dog when he or she does something you like and give a negative response to something you do not like. Over time, your dog, through repetition, will learn what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. He or she will be a much better member of the family and it will be good for them also. There are several ways you could train your dog not to bark when you leave your home. 
you would need something like a loud can of rocks or marbles inside the can or a garden hose, and you would use these for negative suggestions. You would leave your home and then quietly come back and just hide outside somewhere in front. When you hear your dog barking, use the hose to just put the nozzle over the fence and squirt him or her, or throw the can of rocks or marbles in the general direction, careful not to hit them. The loud noise will scare them, and they will associate the barking with getting wet or having loud noises come at them. They will eventually get tired of the barking. You could also use a treat and the command, quiet or stop. When your dog is barking, you give the command quiet, and when he or she stops barking, give them a treat and praise, and eventually you would just give them praise. With just about any dog, it will never happen overnight. It takes consistence and patience. Your dog will make great progress and then fall back sometimes. That is only natural. They will move forward again with patience and good dog training. You can make your dog an excellent family member. Sometimes a dog just likes to bark at the mail delivery person or delivery person that comes around in your dog's eyes. This person is coming into their territory and is an intruder and unwelcome guest and your dog barks continuously at this person. The person usually does leave in a short period of time and the dog thinks that his barking has made the intruder go away and he or she has done a good job. If you want to cure this type of barking and you are friends with your mail person or delivery person, you could tell them your training method and give them a bag of snacks to carry with them. Each time they would come to your house, they could give the dog a snack over the fence and your dog would come to think of this person as a welcome guest instead of an intruder and the barking would settle down after a bit. The best way to train any dog is for you and your puppy or dog to enroll into obedience classes together. You will have a much better understanding of just basic dog techniques and you would bond with your dog even more. Nineteen. When your Boston Terrier has dog food or toy aggression tendencies. If you give your new Boston Terrier puppy or dog a bowl of dog food and then they growl at you or try to get between you and the food bowl, they have a dog food aggression. When they have a food aggression, sometimes that carries into toys and playthings also they like to be overprotective of. When your dog shows this type of aggression, he or she is telling you that they are the alpha male dog and you are not. You have to change this behavior right away before it gets out of control. Your dog might not even be aware that he or she is doing this. They see you as the bad person because you come and always take things away from them. They might consider their food or toy something you want to take from them and they want to protect it from you. Your Boston Terrier might think that he might not get any more dog food than what you gave him or her when it's gone and they growl at you when you get close because they don't want you to get it. Each time your dog growls, you back away. It reinforces their bad behavior. They think they are being rewarded by you backing off and leaving them alone. They won the battle in their mind. If your Boston Terrier is sharing a food bowl with another dog and being aggressive, it is best to simply use two food bowls and separate the dogs while they eat. If your dog seems like he might bite, it is best to stay back and then correct the problem by making them work for their food. One way you could teach your Boston Terrier puppy or dog is you could put the food bowl down on the ground empty. The dog will look at the empty food bowl, be a bit confused, and then look up at you. Ha, you would be in charge now. You could add some food to the bowl a little at the time and get down close to the dog and bond with him or her while they're eating. You should always get your puppy or dog used to you touching or petting him or her while they are eating. They should get used to human touch, but be very careful. Use caution. You want to get your Boston Terrier used to you at mealtime. If your dog is showing signs of aggression, you could slowly and carefully hand feed your dog. You could use this time to teach him or her stay and sit commands. You could walk by your dog's food bowl and while he or she is looking, throw in a treat every now and then and your dog will look forward to you coming around their food bowl and leaving snacks or treats sometimes and you would be an invited guest. You could also substitute their food 
You simply take the bowl of food away from them, then put down something better they would love to eat. And when they get the idea of giving something up to get something even better from you, it works great. You need to be gentle with your puppy or dog. Yelling or screaming your lungs out is not going to help the situation. Be persistent, and over time you will teach your puppy or dog not to be so aggressive at mealtime or with their favorite toys. It is a good idea to enroll yourself and your puppy or dog into obedience classes. It'll do you both a world of good. 20. What you should know about fleas and ticks. Fleas, ticks, mites, and lice are some outer parasites that will drive your dog and both you crazy. It will involve your puppy or dog constantly scratching and biting, trying to get the fleas and other parasites off them. When you see your puppy or dog using their hind legs to scratch their ears and using their teeth to try and dig into their skin, it's a pretty good idea they have fleas or a more serious problem. You can usually get rid of parasites like fleas and ticks with a good quality shampoo and more. One of the things you need to remember is that the eggs that these little parasites leave behind can take days to weeks to months to hatch. You need to be sure you kill all of the eggs on their bedding materials and other places your pet frequents and stays. Fleas are a common problem for puppies and dogs and they are known to carry and transfer tapeworms sometimes. A good flea spray or shampoo or other products should work fine. They do have other brands that you usually apply once a month. That usually will take care of the problem the best and on the more expensive side, but well worth it. You should not use any chemicals on pregnant or nursing mothers as this could harm the puppies or newborn litter. Ticks are a problem. They can carry Lyme disease and other diseases. Dogs usually get these from trees and bushes as the parasites fall onto the dog's hair. They then attach themselves to the skin and suck the blood, and sometimes will suck the blood of humans as well. If you see a tick on your dog and you want to remove it, do not just pull on it. The head might snap off and stay embedded in the dog's skin. Use a pet shop oil for removing ticks and try and drown and suffocate the tick and then use tweezers to wiggle back and forth until the whole body becomes free. If your dog gets lice, you will be able to spot them pretty easily. You would usually need a good quality shampoo or insecticide for lice from your local pet store and it will usually take several applications to make sure they are all gone. If your dog has mites, it is best to take them to the veterinarian for a checkup and get special medications for your type of mites. There are many different kinds of mites, so your vet should be able to identify them. Left untreated, it will get worse and worse. Some of the mites to look for are around the ears with dark spots that look like small scabs, but they're actually mites eating your dog. Some mites you cannot see unless the vet uses a microscope, and for this reason you should take your dog in right away if you suspect mites to help get rid of your dog's discomfort. 21. How to Stop Your Boston Terrier Puppy or Dog from Biting It is natural when puppies are young to want to bite on something, especially if they are still teething. A young puppy whose teeth are breaking through the gum limes will want to chew on something. They will chew on a person's hands to help the teething pain go away, just like babies like to chew on teething rings. When puppies are playing, they are going to want to snap and bite, but that is because they are playing and it is completely natural when they do this. The sooner you can teach your puppy or dog not to bite, the better. It is not a very good practice to play tug of war or chase your puppy around the house or yard type games. This will only make the matter worse in most cases. The puppy or dog will get all excited or scared and his natural instincts will take over. This might include biting or snapping at you. You should never smack or hit your puppy, especially in the face. They might end up being afraid of you, or worse, they might even think of you as a threat and then try to bite you. The other reason a puppy or dog might try to bite you is they are trying to prove their dominance over you, just like they are the alpha male dog, and you have to take care of this problem right away before someone is bit. If you do not teach your puppy not to bite, he or she will not know and think it is acceptable behavior. 
you as the puppy or dog owner have to put a stop to it right away. If your puppy starts to bite your hand or foot, give them the command, no, and then replace your foot or hand with a chew toy. You need to teach them that biting you is unacceptable behavior. 22. What to expect before and during your dog having puppies. Dogs will usually give birth roughly 63 days after breeding. This is the time you would want to get things ready for the new mother. You would want to build a whelping box so the mother has a nice safe place to raise the puppies. Before the mother gives milk, she will usually start digging, scratching, trying to find a place to hide to make a new place like a den to give birth as their natural instinct will take over. I have seen a dog in the woods give birth with no help from a human. When I got there, she had cleared a spot on the leaves, pushed it all away, and made a small den, and her five puppies were doing fine. All were healthy. You would not want your dog to have puppies in the woods, but this was a sight I witnessed. You would hopefully have a whelping box made up for your dog that has safety rails inside so the mother does not squeeze any of the puppies and she can't lean up against them and smother them by accident. It is better if you are with the mother while she is giving birth. You mostly need to be there in case the cord is wrapped around the puppy's neck or if the mother cannot get it out by herself after trying. Always let the mother do it herself. If there is a problem, have clean towels and a sterile pair of scissors handy to cut the umbilical cord in case of emergency. Usually the mother will have one puppy at a time, sometimes pretty quick and sometimes about an hour apart. When each puppy comes out, the mother will lick the sack, get it open and then start licking the baby and this will get the puppy to breathe. Next the mother will chew part of the umbilical cord off with a long piece still hanging on to the babies and then she will chew off more later. Your dog will appreciate you more by being with her and be gentle with her and telling her she is doing well. If for any reason something goes wrong, you would need to make sure you get the sack off the puppy and then take the towel to dry them up quickly and then rub their chest, try to get some air into them so they can breathe. You would then take the sterile scissors, cut the umbilical cord, and then give the puppy to the mother so she can lick her and put her on one of her teats so the baby can immediately eat. Depending on how your dog is and how she feels most comfortable, most dogs will squat and give birth. Others will lie on their side and let them come out that way. Giving birth is a natural thing. You should just be present for emergencies and to soothe your dog. A dog out in the wild that has her puppies on her own will be much more protective of her pups and may even growl or bite you if you try to get close to the puppies. If you are right there in the box with her when she is giving birth and helping her and putting each puppy on a teat and making sure they all get milk, she will much more likely welcome you into her pack. It will be much easier for you when it comes time to socialize the puppies. At roughly two weeks, the baby's eyes and ears will be opening, and then not much longer after that, the puppies will be playing with each other, jumping around, and nursing for mom non-stop almost, it seems. You should have your dog checked out by a vet before giving birth and after giving birth, and you could also take the puppies in for a checkup. Mothers will usually start to wean their puppies after about five weeks of age, and you will start your new puppies on a feeding schedule, and it's best to search for the proper amount and schedules online, but a little common sense can go a long way. All puppies need to be vaccinated against puppy diseases at the proper time. You can have your vet do this, and some pet stores offer the service. And sometimes you can administer the shots yourself, but learn before you do that. All dogs must have a rabies shot, and only a qualified vet can administer rabies shots, and not until the puppy has reached four months old, and not any sooner than that. The rabies shot is very important as all the shots are typically called either 5-in-1 or 7-in-1. You would give them in a series after waiting a certain amount of time. You would either give another shot, usually three sets of shots, but with anything you should consult your veterinarian and make sure you read any directions very carefully before trying to do it yourself. I have personally been buying my own shots for years. I usually get them in a box of 25 which I keep chilled. I buy them on the internet and then they come in a box with usually dry ice 
from a well-respected company, one of the biggest, I believe. I do see how it has become harder to buy online, and some companies have discontinued selling to the public. So please, do some research. While your dog is pregnant, she will require more food and water since she is eating for several now. When the puppies are born, and right after, the mother is going to be hungry. I suggest you give her some canned dog food that is easiest for her to digest, and lay off the dry food for a bit. Make sure she has plenty of water, and the softer the food will be gentle on her system since she just gave birth. I find the mothers are extremely hungry after giving birth. Just something I've noticed with raising dogs for over 25 years now. For the first several weeks, the mother will use her tongue to stimulate the puppies and give them bowel movements. The mother licks and cleans up the accidents the little puppies make until they get to be too much for the mother usually around the time she starts weaning them, and then you will start feeding them. Besides keeping everything clean, your job is not that hard for the first five weeks. The mother will be doing all the work as you start to feed the puppies and clean up the box. You will get much more involved, trust me. I've been cleaning up after dogs and puppies for many years, which is one reason why you teach your dog to go into a certain spot right from the beginning. Your dog should already have a regular vet and he or she should be aware that your dog will be giving birth. If you suspect any unusual activity or smelly, foul, orange, or reddish discharge, or any other thing you think is wrong, get her to the vet as soon as you can. Don't let your dog go through any pain, and don't let any of the puppies get hurt if you can help it. If you use your common sense and read several different articles about dogs giving birth, that is the best way to teach you about it. Don't read one article Read several different opinions. You will learn much more that way. Twenty-three. What the benefits of microchipping your dog are to you. If you've been wondering if microchipping is good for your dog and if it's a good thing, it is, if you ask me. It's just like anything. If you ask seven different veterinarians the same question, you might get some totally different answers and opinions, so just use your common sense. A microchip is placed inside of your dog, usually between the shoulder blades, and with a syringe that pretty much looks like the one the dog gets their shots with. The microchip is about the size of a grain of rice. It is inserted by your veterinarian, and different vets sell different packages, but relatively all the same. It is really no more painful to your dog than them getting vaccinated. If you ever lose your dog, this is one of the best ways of hoping to get him or her back. The microchip is basically a transmitter that the skin just grows right back over, and it stays with your dog for their entire life. The transmitter does not require any batteries or maintenance. It is embedded with a number the company supplies and your veterinarian will have much more details on it. You will have to pay a one-time fee for this service. When a scanner that the vet or animal shelter should have on hand these days, maybe some smaller ones out in the country vets still don't have access to, but if they do, the scanner would make the transmitter give off a signal that the scanner could read. Since it is universal, injecting the microchip behind the shoulder blades, but over time and years, some dogs may have growth movement. Millions of dogs get lost every year. One of the best ways to make sure your puppy or dog does not get lost in the first place is to be a responsible pet owner. Make sure your home and yard is puppy and dog proof, just like you might do for a real baby in your home. Make sure gates and fences are secure. Make sure there are no holes dug that you don't know about. Make sure your dog gets plenty of exercise, love, and care so they don't feel the need to go elsewhere. If for some reason your dog becomes lost, the collar and tags might get lost or removed, and then it is nearly impossible to find the rightful owner sometimes, and the worst you can imagine might happen. With the microchip, it is not a for sure bet, but your odds are much higher of getting your lost dog back than if you did not have it. Hopefully, your puppy or dog has a very nice place to live, either indoors or outdoors, and they like their surroundings and never dream of running or getting away. However, if for some reason they are in heat or hear kids playing or the mail delivery person coming and they want to escape or just get loose by accident, like a small child leaving the door open when they are gone, 
that microchip is going to play a bigger role in finding him or her, and I really hope it works for everyone. Twenty-four. How to get something out of a puppy or dog's belly without surgery. If your puppy or dog has chewed up something and you don't know what to do, you could try this method maybe. But you should always go to or call your veterinarian first and let them know what you're going to do. Now, I would not recommend this procedure to anyone really. I just wanted you to know that there is another option out there before having to resort to costly surgery that could kill or hurt your puppy or dog. For those that do not have the money for surgery, I would not want you to leave something dangerous in your puppy or dog, and this might help get it out. If your dog eats some Christmas tree ornaments, the glass kind, or some metal objects like small staples, pens, or glass fragments, or anything else that is totally dangerous, there is one other way to get the items out without surgery. You would use cotton balls to do this. You would want to buy some cotton balls and make sure it is cotton balls, not something on the bag that says cosmetics, as they will have some other type of fibers in it that would not be good for your dog. So make sure you get the ones that say cotton balls. For small sized dogs, you would roughly use two cotton balls. For medium dogs, you would use three to five. For a large dog, you would use six or more. You would want to cut the cotton balls into smaller pieces. If your puppy or dog swallows glass shreds from things like Christmas tree ornaments or other items, you would dip the cotton balls in milk or water, and then the puppy or dog would actually eat it and swallow it. If for some reason your dog does not want to, you can actually force the cotton balls into their throat and make them swallow it. As the cotton works its way through the digestion system, it will pick up the fragments of glass, even the tiniest of ones, and it will get caught into the cotton material. The cotton will protect the inside linings of your dog, so your dog will stay protected. When the puppy or dog defecates, you want to make sure there is no bleeding, and if there is, take your puppy or dog to the veterinarian immediately. If you suspect your puppy or dog of swallowing something, you should take them to the vet. If you think you can do it yourself, you could try this method as the cotton balls are supposed to entangle all the bad stuff and protect it when it's coming out of the dog's body. And if everything goes well, you have maybe just saved your dog's life. Even if you take your dog to the vet, you could mention this procedure to the vet. As not every vet is up on everything, and no two veterinarians are the same. 25. How to clean your Boston Terrier's ears correctly. Before you start to clean your puppy's or dog's ears, you should make sure you do not smell a foul odor coming from their ears. If it smells pretty bad, they might have an infection and bacteria in the ears or worse. You should take your pet to the vet right away because it could be something serious. It is good to get your dog used to having their ears cleaned on a weekly basis if you can. You never want to use cotton swabs or Q-tips on a dog's ear. Only cotton pads, the kinds ladies use to take their makeup off, is best. You should pick up a good puppy or dog ear cleaning solution from your local pet supply store or veterinarian. Gently pull the ear flap upward to straighten out the ear canal, and then squirt some of the cleaning solution into the puppy or dog's ears. Massage the base of the ear with your thumb and forefingers for about 30 seconds to make sure the cleaning solution gets deeper down into the ear. Your puppy or dog is going to want to shake their head to get the cleaning solution out of the ears. Just let them do that for a minute. Next, use a damp cotton pad to gently wipe out the dog's ears and then clean them up as good as you can. Make sure you do not put anything down inside of the dog's ears as this could hurt them and freak them out also. To help your puppy or dog relax the first few times, you could gently give your dog a head and ear massage, then gently start exploring and playing with their ears so that they get used to the feeling of your fingers poking around their ears. Most dogs are heavily sensitive in their ears and feet area the most, so be careful not to frighten them. Just be gentle and easy. You should never use peroxide on your dog if it has not been diluted. Pure peroxide can be too harmful to your dog or puppy's ears with full strength.
Consult your veterinarian when you have signs of foul odors since dogs' ears are one of the keen senses they use. When you are done cleaning your puppy or dog's ears, make sure you let them air dry, especially if they are long since it will be harder to dry. Bacteria and other things love warm, damp areas to grow. Keep the ears folded over to make sure they have good air circulation to dry correctly and not be left damp. Twenty six. How to stop your Boston Terrier from eating their own stools. The last thing you ever want to see is your Boston Terrier eating his or her own fecal stools. You would not want any guests or family members over, and your dog does that in front of them. If your Boston Terrier is eating his or her own feces stools, you might want to increase their daily exercise activity and make sure you are feeding him or her a high-quality dog food. There are chewable treats for dogs which will make even the worst offender stay away from his or her own feces stools. It goes right through the intestines of your dog and out in the stools and with a taste they will hate, but it will not harm them. The active ingredient is pretty close to red hot chili peppers and your dog will hate the taste, but the treats do not harm your dog at all. They will not eat their feces stools anymore, thereby taking care of the problem. This is not to be used in puppies or dogs that are nursing or dogs that have any medical problems. Ask your veterinarian about dog treats that will stop your Boston Terrier from eating his or her own stools. And you could just as easily order it online also if you search for it. The last thing you want at a party or family get-together is your Boston Terrier showing off his bad habits of eating their own feces. It's just not good and you need to take care of it immediately. 27. How invisible fencing typically works to train and protect your dog. Hopefully, this will give you a basic understanding of how invisible fencing for your dog should work and if it is good for you or not good for you. Only you can decide if you agree with invisible fencings. Not all yards are the same and by no means. Not all dogs are the same, but it should work for most people that use it correctly. This system would usually entail you trenching a trench or digging up the ground along the path where you want your invisible fencing to go. Just pretend it is an invisible wall and where you put the wires will be where the invisible fencing will be located at. You would want to check with your local utilities or power company before digging up and installing wires, but it is not that difficult for the average person as long as they follow the instructions carefully for the system they purchase. Your dog would be fitted with a collar that has some sensors that stick out and contact the dog's skin. From what I hear, the dog does not get a shock, but a surprising jolt. And since dogs cannot talk, we really will never know what they feel until we find a dog that can talk. We could put him or her on television, and maybe they could tell us everything that is wrong with dogs. And kids would love that story. But you get the idea. The way it works is you bury the wires underneath the lawn so you don't have wire everywhere. You could also run it along wooden fences, but not metal ones since it would be a boundary wall they couldn't dig out. You could also run it along wooden fences, but not metal ones, and that could be a boundary wall so they don't get out, but you don't have to dig up that section because a fence is already there, basically making them stop digging out or jumping over the fence anymore. The collar would require batteries and a test period, a training sessions with your dog so that he or she understands what is desired of them. You would have to train them properly about where they can and cannot go in the yard. They do have systems for inside the home for dogs that jump over gates, and you could find that on the internet for inside places. You would place red flags along the path of the invisible fencing for training purposes with your dog. The dog needs to be able to see the invisible lines first. This is what the flags are for on the ground. The system that is working would give the dog several beeps warning him or her are too close to the fence. If they do not move back, they will get a shock or a surprise jolt depending on how you look at it, since the dog cannot tell us. The part you really need to teach your dog before you let him or her loose on their own 
is to turn away from the fence and go back. You should teach them this by turning it into a fun game for both of you. You would train your dog by taking them up to the fence, and when the beeping starts to go off, you would turn around and run and call your dog to come too. When he or she comes, you would give him or her praise and teach them to turn back and not go through it. Like anything, you would actually need to teach them to go through it so they know what they are in for. Walk with them when the warning beeping goes off and let them experience the effect of the surprise. I'm hoping they are getting a surprise rather than a shock, but if this saves one of them from running out in the street and getting hit or killed by a car or truck, or getting loose and biting someone, then I believe they need to learn what will happen if they don't come back while you are there rather than when you are away. You would leave the red flags up until you think your dog is ready for them to be taken down. As with anything you love, take good care of your dog and watch them and keep an eye on them. If you just use common sense and follow the directions on the kit you buy, you do not take any shortcuts. Do it right the first time and it will work. Just plan everything ahead of time and give your dog plenty of time to learn the new system with you. And you both should be happier and safer. 28. Some items you should never let your puppy or dog eat. Some items you should never let a puppy or dog eat because it can harm or kill them, so you should be aware of them. I am sure most people already know you should never give a puppy or dog chocolate, not even a little piece. Chocolate usually has caffeine in it, and even a small amount could kill a puppy or dog or put them into convulsions. Just like people, some big guys can eat 15 hot dogs and 5 bottles of beer, and the next guy can't even eat one hot dog and would never finish a bottle of beer. That is just an example, really. A puppy or dog is the same way. No two dogs are going to be alike. Some dogs might be fine eating broccoli, and other dogs might bite the bullet from it. So it's nice to know what kinds of foods could hurt your dog, and this list could change at any time, really. Some things you would not want to give your dog might include raisins and grapes, macadamia nuts, walnuts, cooked bones. Raw bones are good, cooked bones splinter, and can hurt your dog much easier than raw fresh bones. You would not give avocado, onions, garlic, mushrooms, broccoli, tea or coffee, white bread, white potatoes, white rice, peppers, raw spinach, and probably some other things your vet might have on a list for your dog. Granted, some dogs might have been eating these products for years, but all young children need to be taught that giving even the smallest amount of chocolate to a puppy or dog can be deadly. Even the candy wrappers on the ground, a dog might try to lick it up. Teach children that candy has no place in a dog's life. Some dogs cannot digest broccoli, for example, very well, and other dogs might be just fine. It is better to find alternative foods since the world has so many kinds. The best food of all is food you make yourself, since you can actually see the real ingredients going into it. Some supermarket dog foods are so full of corn and soybeans, you wonder if your dog gets any nutrition from it, unless he or she eats the whole bag, and that could be the case. If you learn to fix your dog healthy food at home, and leave out the stuff that might hurt or kill him or her, you would be doing your dog a big favor. 29. How to make sure your dog is eating a healthy amount of food. You, as the dog owner, have the responsibility to make sure your dog is not underfed or overfed. Some mature dogs can have free food out all day long and eat just the right amount on their own. Some other dogs might just eat nonstop and hurt they. Some dogs might just eat all day, nonstop, and then hurt themselves, and that usually you have to stop it and feed them a measured amount twice a day so they don't overeat. Every dog is different. Younger puppies and dogs usually are very energetic and can burn off some steam, but you should still exercise them and take them to obedience classes if you can. Older dogs get more and set in their ways and tend to sleep more as they get older. Older dogs still need exercise, but not long periods of it. It's best to give them plenty of times to go out and exercise with you, just shorter periods of time. 
you can ask your vet what is the best food to give your dog. Each vet will have his or her own opinion, then try to stick with what they tell you. You can also go online and use a weight chart and determine roughly how much your dog should be eating daily. You can measure that amount into their bowl twice daily, and if they are eating at all, you can increase the amount to control weight gain or loss, just like decreasing the amount you give them. Your vet should be able to tell you what your dog's daily intake should be, and then try to stick to that. Make sure you have plenty of fresh drinking water available at all times for your puppy or dog. If you leave your dog inside of a crate, make sure there is an ample water supply. Dogs, just like humans, would prefer a nice cool drink of refreshing water rather than a drink from an old warm water with dog hairs floating in it. Give your dog fresh water as often as you can. 30. Make it easier and healthier for feeding your Boston Terrier. You can make it much easier on your Boston Terrier when it comes to eating. Some dogs, you can leave their food out for them, and they do not overeat. Other dogs may overeat until they get bloated or they gobble it down super fast and have gas problems and sometimes serious problems more than that. To find out how much your dog should be eating, you should check with your vet. You could also measure your dog's food and then feed him or her twice a day. If they eat the whole bowl, give them a little more next time. If they do not eat at all, give them a little less. You could measure it and then come up with the right amount for your dog each meal. For dogs that gobble down their food so fast, the pet supply places sell dog bowls that have inserts in the bowl so the dog would have to slow down to eat. You would never want to give your dog just one meal a day. You should feed them twice a day and at the same time each day so they can count on their schedule, just like people seem to love breakfast, lunch, and dinner. For large-sized dogs, it is harder on them and their joints to have to bend over to get their head down to the ground to get a drink of water, and it's bad for their joints, especially if they are still young. Some pet supply stores sell water and food bowls which go in a stand and make it higher off the ground. That seems to be easier for puppies or dogs to swallow as their body is more parallel to the ground while eating. Raised water in eating bowls will make your dog more comfortable while eating, and it's especially great if they have muscle or joint problems. You want your dog to have a happy and healthy life. Just like people, dogs don't drink enough water sometimes. If you can get your dog to drink more water, it will be much better and healthier for them. You can give them one of the bowls from the pet supply store that give them a continuous supply of cool water and your dog might even enjoy it more. 31. How to Clean and Groom Your Boston Terrier It is very important to clean and groom your puppy or dog on a regular basis and keep them clean and sharp looking and just nice to smell. When bathing your puppy or dog, make it a fun experience for them each time, and the earlier you start doing it, the better. This is the time you can inspect your dog completely so that you can notice any new cuts, scrapes, rashes, or anything you might notice when you're just playing with them. This is also the perfect time to inspect your puppy's or dog nails just to check to see if they are too long and need to be trimmed. Use cotton balls when cleaning the inside of the ears. Never use cotton swabs as you could damage their ears. Check inside their ears for any foul odors, a sure sign you would need to visit your local vet. If your puppy or dog shakes his or her head a lot and tries to scratch at it on a regular basis, your dog could have ear mites or an infection. If you do not wash, comb, or brush your dog on a regular basis, they could end up with mats in their hair, and those are harder to get out. When mats get wet, they are harder to deal with, so you should try to get them out before the bath. Fleas can be another big problem. Make sure you use a good quality flea shampoo and for serious problems, consult your vet at once. Your veterinarian or pet supply warehouse will also carry some expensive solutions that do work very well that you can usually place on the dog once a month to cure this problem. In order to keep water out of your dog's ears while giving him or her a bath, you could put cotton balls just inside the ear canal so that water does not get inside the ears and cause a bacterial infection later. After you get the bath ready water for your puppy or dog, 
You do not want the water to get in their eyes or ears. You certainly do not want to put your dog's head underneath the water unless you want the dog to panic and freak out. Not a good idea at all. Wet your puppy or dog's hair from the head down and then apply a good quality shampoo and lather the dog up, rinse, and repeat. During the bath, it's a good time to talk to your dog and tell them what a good job they're doing. They will relax more when they hear the gentleness of your voice. After you take your dog out of the bath, you do not want to just let him or her run outside because they will go directly to some dirt and roll in it and your work will be wasted. You should towel dry them as much as possible and then let them air dry in a warm place until they are completely dry. Then you should brush or comb them until they are nice looking. If you decide to use a blow dryer on your dog, make sure the setting is on the lowest setting so you don't hurt your dog. If your dog gets so dirty or has more mats than you know what to do with, it's best to go to a professional groomer and let their experience work for you. You might learn a few tricks for next time by watching them for when you do it yourself later. 32. How to trim a puppy or dog's nails properly. The first thing you should know about dog's nails is the blood vessels go down to their nails and if you cut it too short, they will bleed or hurt the dog. The part you do not want to cut is called the quick. That part has the pink color to it and the whites or clear nails. For dogs with dark nails, it is much harder to see and you need to be more careful. It would pay to get a quality pair of nails clippers if you're not sure, you can ask your vet. You can even have the vet or the groomer give you a lesson on how to trim the nails yourself. It is not that hard. You just need to be extra careful not to hurt the puppy or dog. You would be much better off if you teach your dog when they're a puppy to have their nails clipped. If your dog is walking around and you can hear their nails clicking on the floor, it's time to cut them. Some dogs need their nails cut once or twice a month. Other dogs can go longer between pedicures. Make sure the nail clippers you're using are sharp. You should start at the tip of the nail and then clip a little bit at the time. When you get close to the quick or pink part, you do not want to cut that. If you do cut that and it starts to bleed, use a steptic pencil or steptic powder or even baby powder and apply pressure until the bleeding stops. On dark or black nails, it's very difficult to see the pink sometimes, so you'd want to just do a little at the time. You can use a nail file to file down the rest and file off any of the sharp edges from clipping. This is also the perfect time to inspect your puppy or dog's feet. Some dogs that play outside can get the little burrs from the plant in between their toes. The prickly things get stuck in their feet just like a thorn and can get infected. I know this from experience as we had those weeds in our land and our dog got the smallest one in her foot and it got infected. The vet gave us antibiotics and the infection was cured and then I made sure I removed those kinds of weeds from our property. If your puppy or dog did not have his or her dew claws removed, then it would need to be clipped also. It could get caught on something when your dog is jumping around. It is the nail on the inside of the front legs which is a little bit up from the paws. It does not get used so it might be pretty sharp. Do that one the same way you clip the other nails. If you don't trim your dog's nails on a regular basis, the quick will start to grow out even longer over time, the part with the blood vessels in it. Your dog's nails need to be clipped or filed down. If you can hear them click on the floor when they walk, they need to be taken care of. The dog should be walking on his or her paws and the nails should not be touching the floor. If your dog's nails are too long, it can make it hard for them to walk around properly. It is good to have your dog lay down all the way on the floor while you trim their nails. When you are done trimming your dog's nails, you should give them praise and a treat to your dog because you're going to do it again sometime and you want your dog to cooperate each time. 33. The five different kinds of worms that can harm your dog. There are five different kinds of worms that can hurt your puppy or dog, and here is a list of them. There are so many different types of medicines and antibiotics for your dog, and not all of them work on each symptom, so it is best to consult with your vet for the proper treatment. One of the easiest ways for puppies and dogs to pick up worms is by letting them play or eat their feces matter. 
It is important to pick up the dog's poop in the backyard all the time on a regular basis so it can be clean and safe. Hookworms. Hookworms are not visible from the naked eye. Hookworms hide in the intestines and can be transferred to humans. Hookworms are small, thin worms that hook onto the intestinal wall and then suck the blood from the puppy or dog, which can cause amnemia and even death. These worms actually have teeth, which cause bleeding in the intestines. Hookworms will grow to full maturity in the intestines. Hookworms can be spread from the mother's milk right to the puppies, so the whole family needs to be dewormed. The worms like to live in feces matter and contaminated soil, like the dirt you might have in your backyard that your dog likes to play in, maybe. If your dog has hookworms, some signs might include anemia, weight loss, diarrhea, bloody stools, and very low energy. Hookworms could be present and you won't be able to see them, so you'd need to take your pet or stool sample from your pet to the vet for a diagnosis. Roundworms Roundworms are the most common types of worms in puppies. Just like hookworms, roundworms attack the intestines and cause a pot-bellied look on your puppy or dog. Puppies can get roundworms from their mother's milk or even from the uterus before birth. They can also pick up eggs from contaminated soil outside. Since roundworm eggs can live up to several years outside in the dirt and soil, Roundworms can be transmitted to humans, look just like hookworms, so it is vital to eradicate them as soon as possible. Roundworms will live in the intestines and will grow to adulthood and lay eggs that will produce more roundworms. Roundworms can be seen by the eye in your dog's vomit or stools and is up to seven inches long and they will resemble spaghetti somewhat. When your dog or puppy starts to get too many of these roundworms, you will see the pot-bellied appearance on them, and you may notice vomiting, diarrhea, and weight loss. Whip worms. Whip worms are one of the hardest worms to kill. Whip worms are long, skinny-shaped worms that live in the dog's colon. You cannot see them with your eyes. Whip worms can also attach to the intestines and cause intestinal bleeding inside your dog. Signs of whip worms could be weight loss, anemia, diarrhea with some blood or a gooey mucus type substance in it, and a lack of energy. Tapeworms. Tapeworms get their name because they look like flat scotch tape. Tapeworms also attack the intestines and can be seen by the naked eye. The tapeworms will look like a rice appearance in your dog's stools. Tapeworms can be broken into pieces, and sometimes you can see the worms on your dog's anus and stools, still moving around with your naked eyes. Tapeworms are not transmitted directly to humans from dogs, but a human still can be infected. Some signs your dog might have tapeworms will be weight loss, uncontrollable itching around the anus area, lots of pain if you touch the abdominal area, and vomiting. Heartworms Heartworms are spread by mosquitoes. When mosquitoes are active, they go from one dog to the next. Heartworms can kill your dog if left untreated, and it is easily preventable. There are no symptoms for heartworms until it is almost fully advanced. The heartworms destroy the muscle and tissues of the heart and can cause heart failure and kill your dog. One of the best measures of these days is to consult your vet for heartworm guard and you can easily find medications online for your dog's heart, since starting them on a medication is the best practice. 34. How to deworm your Boston Terrier for good health. With the different types of dog worms found, it is important to make sure that you put your puppy or dog on a deworming program at the start of two weeks old. Some worms you cannot see with the naked eye, and it is important for the puppy and dog's health to be protected against these parasites that infect their bodies sometimes. Here are some other things you can do to help prevent worms. Try not to let your puppy or dog play with dead animals or rodents. That is where most tapeworms come from. Puppies are prone to tasting their fecal matter, so make sure you discourage that and clean up waste right away. This is the most common way for puppies and dogs to get worms. Having your dog on a flea protection program is great 
since fleas help spread tapeworms in dogs. The dog park is sometimes not the best place for a dog to hang out. Sure, he or she would love it, but some other dog owners do not have their dogs under control. This is an easy place for other dogs to catch stuff, from digging in the dirt to jumping and licking other dogs. Usually, you will have to take a stool sample to your vet, and they will examine it under a microscope to see what type of worms your dog has. For heartworms, a blood test is usually required to detect heartworms. Some dogs may have a small amount of worms that pose no threat to the dog since some dogs have different immune levels, and for some dogs, just the slightest infestation could kill them. Too many worms for any dog would be bad and totally affect their health and well-being. Your dog would have diarrhea, and their shiny coat of hair would become dull-looking. Most of the nutrients from your dog needs from dog food would be going to the worms, and your dog would lose energy and lose weight. The red blood cells would become destroyed, and the dog would become anemic. You can find many different types of dewormers for your puppy and dog from pet supply stores to online pet stores and some of the major retailers of pet products. Dewormers can come in the form of pills, liquid, or injection. Make sure you understand how to use it. Each company and type of dewormer could have different directions. Most vets recommend deworming your puppy at 2, 4, 6, 8, and 12 weeks old. Then follow the directions as some medications will be monthly or quarterly or even semi-annually, so ask your vet which dewormer is best for you or follow the directions closely on the dewormer product that you purchase. 35. What you should know about dog rabies. Rabies is one of the most preventable diseases almost, just by simply going to your vet and having your dog vaccinated. In all 50 states, it is the law that all dogs should have rabies vaccinations no sooner than four months and only by a veterinarian. Some states and towns have different rules about when dogs have to be revaccinated from one to three years annually, and with so many districts being different from each other, you need to check with your town or city. Most dogs get infected from wild animals that might have diseases, like skunks, raccoons, foxes, coyotes, and even bats. Most all rabies is transmitted when an infected animal bites another animal that has not been vaccinated. The virus in the saliva enters through the bite entrance and travels to the brain where it destroys the dog. There is no known cure for the disease yet, and it is almost always fatal, and the dog will certainly die from the disease. There are vaccinations available for humans, so they do not get the rabies virus, but that is usually reserved for veterinarians and people that deal in wildlife or travel to high-risk areas mostly. If you take your dog to the vet after they are four months old, the veterinarian can usually give a low-cost rabies shot and make your puppy or dog safe and protect them from others from the disease from spreading. Lots of pet owners don't get around to getting their pets vaccinated, and that is just one more reason you should get yours done. A disease will destroy your dog and tear you apart. It is very easily preventable with a simple vaccination, and the state requires it by law now. There are three stages of the rabies disease that can affect your dog. Some signs your dog might be infected would include things like bite marks or your dog licking a fresh wound constantly. The disease would make some dogs that are generally good-natured have a split personality and turn violent and vicious. Dogs that are usually aggressive or mean are now being timid and friendly and calm. The disease spreads through the nervous system until it attacks the brain and starts to multiply. There is no cure, and it is too late for your dog after they get the virus. Most vets would recommend euthanization prior to death to save your dog from the pain and suffering. That alone is worth taking your dog to the friendly pet shop and setting up an appointment or just walking in when they have a rabies clinic. Some of the most unpleasant results at the end stage would include your dog's lack of muscle control in the neck and head. This would cause them to drool since they cannot swallow anymore, and it is almost the end for them. The only way to know for sure if your dog has rabies is after death. You can take a brain sample and put it under a microscope only after the dog has died to see if it was rabies. They do have other tests, but it is rare to be used. One of the best ways to keep your puppy or dog protected is use your common sense. 
take your pet to the vet for their vaccinations. When you take your vet on a hike or along the riverbank or through the hills and over the mountains, make sure to use and keep your eyes on them. Keep them away from wild animals. A dog is going to be a dog and investigate things, usually wild animals they find, and that is where the vaccination would come into play already. Protect your dog in the first place, really. This has been Boston Terrier Dog Training and Behavior Understanding Tips. Written by Julia Silverton. Narrated by Van Page. Copyright 2014 by Vince Steed. Copyright Production 2015 by Vince Steed.